In this video, we're going to talk about polynomial functions. We'll define them and we'll draw their graphs. We'll figure out their domain and range. But first, what is a polynomial? This might be something that you have studied in previous grades and you might be forgetting parts of it. So this is a good time to pause and refresh our understanding. And the best way to do that is to test it out. So here are a few functions on the screen. Pause the video, figure out which of them are polynomials and which of them are not. Give this a shot. For polynomials, trigonometry and logarithms are not allowed. They're made up of numbers and variables only. So do you see something that has something to do with trigonometry? Here we have fx equals to cos x. This gets eliminated. This is not a polynomial function. It's called a trigonometric function, but this is not a polynomial function. What else can we eliminate? Well, just like trigonometric functions, exponential functions are also not allowed. So you can't have something like e to the power x. This is an exponential function. This is not a polynomial. Similarly, 2 to the power x, this is also not allowed. This is also an exponential function. Here we have just replaced e with 2. Okay, so these three are out. What else? Here's one more. Non-integer powers are not allowed. The powers of x have to be integers. So integer, 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 okay. Not an integer. So this is not allowed. Not an integer, not allowed. Okay. I think that's it. Anything else? Well, there's more. Negative powers are also not allowed. X is raised to not just integers, it's raised to non-negative integers. So we can't have negative powers hanging around. So here's one, X to the power minus three, that's not allowed. Is there anything else? Well, yes, there's one more. The coefficients, only real values as coefficients are allowed. So non-real coefficients. Square root of three, well, that's real. Square root of minus three. Well, that's not real. This is imaginary. So this is not allowed. Let's see what we have left. We have this function, this function, this function, and this function. All four of them, let's pay a close attention to them. All four of them are actually polynomial functions. Now that we have a good practice, let's look at the formal definition. A polynomial function is f r to r defined by this messy thing where n is a non-negative integer and a0, A1, A2, A3, and so on belong to real numbers and X belongs to R. Now it might look like a lot, but we're getting better at reading these math sentences. So let's break this down. F R to R means that this is a real function. Polynomial functions are real functions. This thing is where the domain is. So X belongs to R means our domain is R. This right here is the definition of F. Y equals to FX is this. It has some coefficients, X and some powers of X. And this thing that's written here, n is a non-negative integer. So the powers of x are non-negative and the coefficients are all real. This is put here just to make sure that the function is a polynomial function. And these are conditions that make y equals to fx a polynomial function. Let's summarize. This is a real function, y equals to fx. It is made up of x's and its coefficients. The powers of x are non-negative and the coefficients are real. And now we know this definition inside out. Now let's try to graph one of them. So this is x axis, this is y axis. Let's say our polynomial function is y equals to fx equals to x square minus four. There are many ways to plot it, but we'll do this by putting in some points. So let's have x and y. Let's try putting in some points. If we have x as zero, we get y as zero minus four, that's minus four. So zero comma minus four will be on the graph. If we put in x as one, we have one minus four, that's minus three. So one comma minus three will be here. If you put in two, that's two square four minus four, that's zero. So two comma zero will be here. If you put in three, that's going to be three square nine minus four, that's five. So three comma five will be here. That's three comma five. Let's put in some negative values as well. Minus one will give us minus three because minus one square is one, one minus four is minus three. Minus two will give us zero and minus three will give us five. The positives and negatives are giving us the same thing because we have an X square here. So let's plot these points, minus one, minus three, minus two, zero, and minus three, five. Now, if we join all of these points, we should get a rough idea of what this graph looks like. So let's do that. This is the graph of this polynomial, Y equals to X square minus four. Technically speaking, this is an upward parabola, but we'll learn about this in the next few chapters. 
For now, let's focus on the domain and range. So the domain of f is all real values. There is no value where you won't get an output. So x belongs to R, that's the domain. What about the range? For this specific polynomial function, the range is limited. It can't take all possible values. This graph takes values from infinity and then goes to zero and then takes in some negative values and takes a U-turn from minus four. And then again takes some negative values and then and then takes all the positive values. So the minimum value that it can take is minus four and it'll take all the values from minus four up to infinity. So that's going to be the range. So while the domain is from minus infinity to infinity, the range is limited. There are two ways to write the range. One is the formal way, range of f is x square minus four. This is just its definition where x belongs to r. This is us saying, you figure out the range. We're not going to do that. But if we look at the graph, this is what we can say. The range is from minus four to infinity where minus four is included. This is a square bracket. So we'll take all values from minus four up to positive infinity. So now we know what a polynomial function is, what its formal definition is, how to graph them and using the graph, how to figure out their domain and range. But let's quickly practice visualizing one more polynomial function before we wrap this up. Y equals to fx equals to x cube. If you want to give this a shot, pause the video, try this on your own. Okay, you can plot in some values, x and y, if you put in zero, you get zero. So zero comma zero is here. For one, you'll get one. So one comma one is here. For two, you'll get eight. So two comma eight is here. We don't have space, so we'll just mark a point. For minus one, we have minus one. For minus two, you have minus eight. Again, we'll draw some point here. And if you connect them, this is what you'll get. This is the graph of y equals to x cube. It, it comes from minus infinity, crosses zero, and then goes towards infinity. The domain is all values of x that it can take, which is all real numbers. So the domain is x belongs to r. The domain is from minus infinity to infinity. What about its range? Well, the range is also from minus infinity to infinity. It's taking all real values. So the range is x cubed where x belongs to r. And if you write the interval notation, this is what we get. Range is minus infinity to infinity. That's it on polynomial functions. Let's look at some more different types of functions in the next few videos.